<laughs> how the devil Oof, are you? So, today I'm going to be going over the Samsung HW MS650. Now, this came out about probably five or six years ago, and at the time it was retailing for 500 quid, which is about 670 US dollars and about 600 euros. So, pretty expensive. Um, and I think it was a little bit overpriced at the time. It was very highly rated, uh, highly reviewed all over. Fantastic soundbar, but 500 quid, come on, sort it out. <laughs> I reckon it's probably, I reckon about 350, 300 would have been a good price point. But anyway, that's what it was at the time. Now I picked this up second hand for 50 quid. <laughs> 50 quid what you say? what did you say 50 quid i did 50 quid mental it's crazy what you can buy second hand these days so is it still worth getting today with all these other sound bars coming out sony's released some excellent sound bars samsung have upgraded uh, the sound bars now so is it still worth it 100 percent definitely for a standalone sound bar it is very very good well worth its high reviews so let's go over uh, what it does how good it is and the connections on the back so what do we have so we have the power in here but this is a power out so you connect this with a, a double-ended cable uh, to another device uh, so when you switch this on it switches on the other device so your blu-ray player so you haven't got to have the blu-ray player plugged in and have all your plug space taken up you can connect it directly to here so that's quite handy then you've got your optical in your digital input toslink under here is your auxiliary three and a half mil jack so you can use that as well it's only an in not an out okay and then you've got your hdmi arc going directly to the tv out and then you've got a hdmi in so that would be again from a blu-ray player directed uh, directly con uh, connected here so you haven't got to connect it to the TV and go through the TV to go through so it doesn't pass through the TV uh, system. It goes directly to the uh, soundbar. Then you've got the remote. It's a bit of a bizarre remote control. Um, I think they've tried to save space by adding less buttons and things like that. But it's, it's a little bit odd. So if you want to change the base, it's on an up and down button. You've got to flick it up like this and down like that to get, if you want to reset it, you just press the top of it. Uh, the the volume is the same. So if you want to, you flip down like if you want to press mute, you just press the top of it and that'll mute it. Uh, you've got uh, your inputs here at the top. So obviously you've got your auxiliary, HDMI in, out Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth. Bluetooth is pretty good. I did, uh, you know, I found it very stable. It is Bluetooth four, but I find it very stable, no drop-offs, and sounds pretty good. And then you've got DIM, which is the HDMI R to your TV. Uh, you've also got uh, this smart mode and surround mode. I didn't find they did anything, and if anything, they made it sound worse to me. Uh, it's supposed to uh, optimize the sound, but I didn't really find it any good. Now, with these sound modes, and now <laughs> on a lot of uh, equipment, you find these sound modes are preset sounds. They're always a bit naff, a bit rubbish. But actually, these work very well. So you've got your standard for normal daytime listening on your TV. Then you've got your music, clear voice, sport, movie, and back to standard. So here's the thing. They do sound uh, different, and they do work. So if you're looking in for normal daytime listening, standard's okay. Um, if you want to put it onto music, it really makes a difference. It opens up the sound stage. Have a listen to this clip I've done comparing the both of them. So what do you think? It, it does sound better. It opens up the music. Movie mode as well. It's, again, you got movie mode, which is great for movies. Sort of enhances the bass a bit, brings the, the sound more forward and separates it a bit better. 
And then you've got clear voice. Now I use clear voice in the evenings when I'm watching TV. Um, it really does bring the voices forward. Uh, you want to turn the bass down a bit, turn the volume down a bit, and obviously you want to still hear the voices. And it actually works. Not like my TV when you put it on clear voice and it makes no difference. So the sound modes do work very well. And then you've got this button here. So if you want to change the treble, this is the bizarre bit. So rather than have a dedicated treble button, you press that once and then you can turn the treble up or down. Okay. Now, if you press it twice, okay, you've got lip sync. So you can sit lip sync. <laughs> so if, you're, if the, the voices are not matching up, you can actually go up to 250. So I think it's 250 milliseconds you can change it to so you can match the voices up. I leave it on note and that's fine. The lip sync is fine. There's no lip sync issues there. But if you do have lip sync issues, that's what it's for. And then you've got the same button. If you press and hold it for five seconds, there you go. You can change your frequency. So you've got 300 hertz, 600 hertz, 1.2. It's basically a graphic equalizer. So if you want to change 150, so on note, you, you could actually put it up and stick it up to six to enhance the bass or whatever. So it's literally a graphic equalizer. But I've got to say, this function is actually redundant if you use the app, which I'll show you now. So the app is pretty good. Uh, you've got your streaming services at the top here. Um, it has Spotify and TuneIn Radio, uh, but it doesn't have Amazon Music, anything to do with Apple or Google Music at all. So that sucks a bit, but you can always Bluetooth it across. Uh, and in settings, then you got you can add a new speaker, alarm, sleep timer. You've got your input sources you can change. So it's on DIN at the moment. So that's um, through ARC, your HDMI, auxiliary, Bluetooth, etc. And there's your music services here. Now, what I did is uh, when I downloaded the app and connected through Wi Fi, I updated the software. Uh, it's already up to date now, so I don't have to update that. But the first thing I did was update it, so I got the latest software on it. Then if you click the three bars here and then the three dots there, you've got your tone. So you can set your bass. You can set your bass and your treble there. Uh, you've got your equalizer, which that, again, which makes the, the thing on there redundant, really. So there's your 150 hertz there up to 10K hertz. Uh, so you can do it on here. You've got your input source again there. I don't know why he's got it on twice. The only thing with the app, though, it hasn't got the ability to change your um, settings, so your, your presets, so you can go from standard to music to movie. You have to do that on the remote, which is a bit weird, really. I don't know why it wouldn't have it on here. Uh, I haven't been able to find it anyway, so there you go. Uh, you've also got Samsung multi-room, so if you've got some multi-room speakers, you can connect speakers to it, and the, again, you can add a new speaker and whatever. Now, what I will say is I did have trouble connecting this to Wi-Fi. It was an absolute nightmare. And I'll show you exactly what happened. So to connect your speaker to Wi-Fi, you go into add speaker. It, it'll prompt, if it's your first time, it'll prompt you this anyway when you first go in. So you add new speaker and you get this screen. So I obviously pressed soundbar. I won't do it now because I don't want to mess up my Wi-Fi link I've already got because it took me ages to do it. And for love nor money, it would not connect through Wi-Fi. And it was saying it was either too far away or the Wi-Fi wasn't working. It wasn't too far away. It's a few feet away, my router. So it wasn't too far away. It's talking out of his anus. Okay, let's go over to the speaker and show you what I had to do. It's bizarre, but I looked on a forum and this is what they said they had to do to get it connected. So on the back of the soundbar, you've got these two here. which You can do speaker add or Wi-Fi setup. So I pressed Wi-Fi setup and that's where it takes you through the process and it starts setting up on the app. Uh, but it just comes back with an error message saying it won't connect. Uh, it's too far away. Try doing the speaker ad. Try the speaker ad. Same error message. Um, and it says try moving your router closer. Look, nonsense. And I tried it several times. It wouldn't work, wouldn't connect. I was fuming because I wanted to update the speaker to the latest software. Um, and you can't do that unless you're connected uh, through Wi-Fi. So anyway, I've read some forums and what they said was, you have to turn off the power 
completely, turn it off for 10 seconds, turn the power back on and within five seconds, press this button here. And would you believe it, it actually worked. I don't understand why it worked, but it connected. So I'll just say that again. <laughs> turn the power off for at least 10 seconds. Turn the power on and within five seconds of turning the power on, as soon as it powers up, you press and hold this till you hear a noise beep and then it'll connect. How weird is that? And it connected fine and I was able to update the software and use Wi-Fi. Very odd, very bizarre, but it worked. Speaker-wise, you've got nine speakers. Nine, okay. You've got uh, six mid-bass speakers and three, uh, three uh, wide-stage uh, tweeters, each with their own separate amplifier. So it means you don't get any distortion at high volume. Um, and having that wide sound stage means there's no sweet spot. So you can literally sit anywhere you like and it'll be fine. Sometimes you have to sit directly in front of the sound bar to get the best sound. But not this one. Uh, you know, uh, you can sit anywhere you like really. Um, what I will say is it's got very good bass for a standalone sound bar. Is it going to be the same as having a subwoofer? It won't go as deep as that. It won't. But, you know, for a standalone soundbar, the bass is pretty good. Here's a little demo uh, showing the TV speaker compared to the soundbar. Obviously, YouTube's going to crunch it down. You're not going to get the, you know, the, you know what it really sounds like. But at the same time, you can hear that there's a massive difference between the soundbar and the TV speaker. Uh, this LG TV I've got here. So why would you want a standalone soundbar? Why would you not want a subwoofer? Well, some people want a little less clutter, a little less wires going around. Um, and this is perfect for me. I mean, I've already got a, a decent surround sound system in another room, uh, which I listen to, you know, my home theatre. Uh, but for this TV, for everyday listening, this is perfect. I don't want to have a subwoofer cluttering up the room, more wires going everywhere. You could get a wireless one, I suppose, but, you know, it's just this standalone sound, but it does what it does. It plays music very well. It plays movies very well. It's got a very good bass relative to what, be in a single soundbar and surprisingly uh, the stereo effect is pretty good considering it's a single soundbar and it's probably because of the length of it look it's not going to be the same as having speakers uh, six feet apart but it does give a really decent stereo effect anyway that's my roundup of the speaker i'm very happy with the speaker and i can't believe i got it for 50 pounds so it's always best searching these uh, selling sites to see if you can pick up something like this. I'm always on them every day, just looking to see if I can get a grab a bargain. And I got one here. Fantastic bit of kit, well pleased with it, but I would not pay 500 quid for it, no. Anyway, thanks for watching, that's the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.